Hello Internet, Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I think it's just about time we opened ourselves another indie box. With the recent news on Twitter that the August boxes should be shipping out any day now, I thought it only fitting that we finally opened the July box in video form. What's an indie box, I hear some of you asking? Well, put simply, it is a digital indie game given the full box treatment. It's a really novel idea and I myself have been quite satisfied with the two indie boxes I have received to date. I'm gonna take you on a tour of the July box and if you like what you see, you can jump in and sign up at theindiebox.com. Head over there for all the pricing information. So if on your trip to theindiebox.com you do decide to sign up, this is what you will receive. This is, for lack of a better term, an indie box box. This is the box which contains your indie box. Here you see a Delver's Drop business card for scale. That is a standard size business card and also perhaps my way of nudging the indie box folks in the direction of a game that is gonna be released in the near future and might deserve the indie box treatment. A quick rip of a pull tab later and you will be inside. You're gonna find your indie box ensconced in black plastic as if it were hardcore pornography. But this is not the latest compilation from Brazzers. This is indeed the July indie box game. This is Forced. Forced is an action adventure game with a heavy emphasis on puzzle solving. It's also, in my opinion, one of the best cooperative games of the last five years. So I would highly recommend you playing it with friends, if at all possible. The game's developer, Beta Dwarf, endeared themselves to a lot of people through their Kickstarter, where they shared the story of the development of Forced, which includes the whole team squatting together in an empty classroom at their college before being thrown out and moving into a house where they cohabitated and developed in a seemingly 24-hour-a-day cycle. But this game is a lot more than a cool infographic telling an interesting story about its development. It is, as I said, one of my favorite co-op games of the last five years, and in fact, it was one of my favorite games of 2013. I highly recommend Forced either in a box or in a digital format. I think it's a game that every lover of co-op should play. And now that that evangelizing is out of the way, let's actually look at the box itself. Stunning cover art by Jared Pope. I really like the look here. I like the box overall. Again, sticking with that Mega Drive or Genesis style box with the Indie Box logo at the top and the repeating pattern in the background, definitely evoking that feeling for me. I, I like it. I like the look of the box. It is another nice addition to my boxed game collection. Flipping over to the back of the box, we see what I have to describe as a very mid-1990s looking design here. Uh, the reason I say that is because the slightly askew screenshots and the white outer glow reminds me of much of the work that I did in my short-lived and ill-advised career in graphic design in the mid to late 90s. Uh, yeah, I depended a little too much on the eye candy suite of plugins for Photoshop to make my work look extreme. Other than that, we've got a description of the game and a healthy dose of accolades. I mean, it's unoffensive. It's the back of the box. It's not the main attraction here, but some time was clearly put into it, so I can appreciate that. I also really appreciate the little strip of green icons down at the bottom. Again, same as with a scapegoat. It's a great additional feature. You see the couch co-op for local co-op, and you see the uh, world there, the World Wide Web, I guess you might say, for your internet-based multiplayer. And you've also got controller support achievements and the soundtrack. It's a nice addition. It evokes the sort of thing that you'd see on a real retail box. And I think it's just a nice little design choice that they have included on all of the previous boxes. And that's enough of this judging a book by its cover stuff. It's what's on the inside that counts after all, right? So let's get this thing opened up. We'll cast the contents out onto the tabletop and quite a haul this month, quite a haul indeed. We'll take a moment to focus in on one or two items at a time and we will give you a feel for the contents of the July Indie Box. Let's start things off with the instruction manual and the temporary tattoos. Now I think the temporary tattoos are probably gonna be the most divisive thing in the box. Some people are gonna automatically think that it's the lamest thing ever and some people are gonna love it. I personally love them. I think they're great renderings of the four iconic weapons from the game as well as the Beta Dwarf and Force logo, but I have another reason to love them. I've got a four-year-old, and I think it's an absolute trip 
to put a lava hammer from Forced onto my four-year-old. Really, really novel thing here. I really like the idea of the temporary tattoos because I have a kid, because I have someone who will think that that shield is the coolest thing ever when I put that on him and he'll go to his preschool class and everybody will think that my son is a badass because he has an awesome claw fist on his arm. So as far as I'm concerned, bravo for the temporary tattoo. The instruction manual is exceptional. I love that they carry over the cover art onto the manual and then once you get inside, you have these great profiles of the weapons of the game as well as controls, some nice little illustrations in there. I mean, it's extremely, extremely good. It is probably much better than the Escape Goat 2 instruction manual, but that is in part because Forced has a lot more that it can communicate in an instruction book, so it fills out the book a lot better than Escape Goat 2 did. So it's definitely my favorite instruction manual of the two I've received, and it is an absolute home run. Up next, let's take a look at a couple of the non-forced centric items that are featured in the box. And I uh, probably should have let off with this actually, but uh, oh well. So you've got the Indie Box logo sticker. There's one of these in every Indie Box, and it is themed around the game that's featured in that month's box. In this case, we have the uh, Indie Box logo with the Spirit Orb, which is a central puzzle solving mechanic in the game Forced, seated inside the O there on the word box. We also have a Rogue Legacy sticker, which is celebrating the game's release on the PlayStation platforms, PlayStation 4, 3, and the Vita. It's a great game and I recommend you play it on one of those platforms or on the PC where it is currently available. So this is a female character, a female uh, offspring from Rogue Legacy, and I love the fact that I now have a sticker with a Rogue Legacy character on it. Uh, as I understand it, Cellar Door contacted IndieBox about possibly being featured, and they were told that unfortunately uh, the slots are pretty full for the actual IndieBox itself, but this sticker seems to be the result of that partnership. And this isn't actually the only partner item in this IndieBox. I'll show you a couple later on when we take a look at the cartridge itself. Let's shift our focus back to Forced with the original soundtrack. The soundtrack was composed by Friedrich, I'm just going to say, Hathen? Hathen. Uh, look, there are squiggles and lines over vowels in your name, and my heathen tongue struggles to pronounce them. Uh, I apologize to you, sir, but I will congratulate you on composing a very good soundtrack. This is the sort of thing that I kind of put on in the background when I'm doing some other work. It has no lyrics to speak of, and it's that sort of orchestral fantasy stuff, the kind of thing you'd get from Lord of the Rings or the World of Warcraft soundtrack in particular. It's really good stuff that you can just put on and zone out to. It's not gonna redefine your idea of what music is, but it is very good all the same. It is a 25 track soundtrack, including all the music from the game, and there is, as always with these Indie Box soundtracks, a bonus track that was created especially for this release of the soundtrack. This time around, it is noted remixer Benjamin Briggs, one of the OC remix guys over there, and he is remixing the track Proving Grounds Battle Theme, which is actually very early in the game, and it's a track that I knew right off the bat when I heard the remix. I remembered the track from its position in the game, which is really cool. It's a good remix. You've actually been listening to it the entire time time. So I will pause here for a moment to let you soak in the sounds of Mr. Briggs with his remix of the Proving Grounds battle theme. Okay, let's try to start winding things down here. We've just got a few items left, and this is the game cartridge. This is roughly the size of a credit card. Let's say it's about one and a half credit cards thick in thickness. It's sturdy plastic. It will not bend uh, unless you want to snap it in half. It has lovely forced art on both sides, the same image on both sides of the cartridge, and it contains a flip-out USB drive 
flip that thing out, stick it in your computer where you will find digital files for the game if you're interested in that sort of DRM free thing. If you're not interested in that, the case which the game cart is sitting on actually has a Steam code on it. It also contains a digital version of the soundtrack, which is really nice, just prevents you from having to do that extra step of ripping it if you would like it on your computer or to upload it to your Magic Music Cloud. And it contains two things which I think are really nice true bonuses here. It contains an art book which is absolutely lovely. It's got a lot of the early concept art, as well as a lot of information on the evolution of the game, the evolution that the game took as it moved through its development cycle, many of the sweeping changes that occurred as they were developing the game. It is absolutely wonderful, and I am glad to have it. There's also a strategy guide. It's the sort of thing that uh, you don't really see a lot of these days, but it is a welcome addition here. It's the kind of thing that would actually make Prima pretty proud. It's got full strategies on every level. It's got builds for the individual characters. It's just a really nice and fully realized strategy guide. I, I absolutely love it. Huge thumbs up. It's beautifully illustrated. It's a wonderful guide. Also included in the cartridge, you're going to find those partner bonuses that I alluded to a little bit earlier. You've got the July issue of The Indie Game Magazine. And though I must admit, I didn't actually look at the June issue of the Indie Game Magazine, which was included in the Escape Goat 2 box. That doesn't mean that I'm not glad to have it as a bonus. A bonus that I actually have already taken advantage of, though, is the Whispering Willows demo. Whispering Willows is the latest game from Nightlight Interactive, and it is a 2D adventure puzzle-solving game. You play as a young lady who can, well, disembody herself, I guess is the best way to put it. She can shift herself into a spirit form, and she needs to do this in order to try to find her dad who is lost in a haunted mansion. So it's a nice, interesting game. It's got an amazing 2D art style. It's nice and slow paced. It is not a platformer by any means, and it really had me, uh, it had me sucked in with its atmosphere. It's not a horror game per se, but it's got that sort of thick atmosphere that really draws you in. And with headphones on, I was uh, looking over my shoulder once or twice uh, just to make sure that I was still alone in the room. So big thumbs up for bonuses like those. I am happy to have them. Now let's turn our attention to the poster. This is the item that I simultaneously love and hate in every indie box. Why do I love it? Well, look at it. It's a beautiful 11 by 17 inch poster, full color featuring official art from the game. It's wonderful. It looks great. Why do I hate it? Because it looked great. In order to get this into the box, they fold it. And they don't just fold it, they crease it. And that creasing does irreversible damage to the poster. Now, I could, if I'm so inclined, really devote myself to getting the folds out of this poster but I'll never get the crease marks out. Even if I laminated this poster flat and steamed it in every way possible, there would always be the telltale signs that this poster had once been folded. And it's for that reason that I both love and hate the posters that are included in the indie box. Now, if I'm realistic for a moment, I think back to my youth and I remember posters just like this crammed inside of Sega Genesis cartridge containers or cartridge cases, and I understand where they're coming from, but that doesn't stop the adult in me, the same adult that takes a tube to PAX to preserve posters from lamenting the damage that's been done here. So big thumbs up on a great, colorful, wonderful looking poster, big thumbs down on the creases that do irreversible damage to it. Now it's time for the showstopper. These are the metallic weapon pins. Now the weapons are a huge part of force, so it's kind of no surprise that the best item in the box ends up being one that's centered around the weapons. But the way they've brought these to life, I mean, this might be the best thing that IndieBox ever produces. You hear that IndieBox? I'm throwing down the gauntlet here. You've been challenged. Top this. I would love to see it. These things are nickel plated and they're sort of lapel pins. So they're about an inch and a half across at their widest. From tip to tip, the uh, bow is one inch and a half across and the shield at its widest is an inch and a half across. So that's roughly the size. And you know, if you use the metric system, I don't know no metric systems, I'm an arrogant American. So do a conversion online or something. 
but that is your rough size on those. They are uh, really great. The sculpt on the uh, shield is wonderful, really evoking the feel of the actual weapon in the game. And the bow too, the design is spot on. Uh, there's just not enough of it. The bow is just a, a, a small weapon and there's just not enough there to, to make it a home run, but the shield is absolutely a home run. You know, when I first opened the box, I knew I was only gonna get two of these. So I had my fingers crossed. I had a specific duo in mind and this is not it. I actually wanted the hammer and the spirit blades because that's what I play in the game. So of course I had that bias, but when I opened this up and I took a look at that shield, I forgot all about those spirit blades and that hammer. This thing is just absolutely impressive. And yeah, I probably would trade the bow away for the spirit blades, but uh, I really can't complain about this at all. You could receive all four items if you recruited a friend into the indie box, but unfortunately I have no friends, so I was not able to receive all four pins. These things are off the chart. If this box already wasn't worth its uh, value, worth the price you're paying for it, these things have to put it way over the top. And there it is, folks, the July Indie Box revealed and critiqued for your pleasure. Let's recap it. We've got the box itself with the beautiful original art. You've got the forced soundtrack featuring the original remix from Ben Briggs, the instruction booklet, the temporary tattoos, the beautiful nickel-plated collector's pins, the cartridge, which not only features the DRM-free game files, but also a Steam code and the digital version of the soundtrack, as well as the bonuses of the Whispering Willows demo and the July issue of IGM, and the icing on the cake is the Indie Box and Rogue Legacy stickers. What a box. Now, if you purchased this from the Indie Box with the single month subscription, you would pay $20 all said and done with shipping. Is this worth 20 bucks? Hell yes, it is. The game itself, Forced, if you buy it right now on Steam, it's 15 bucks. The soundtrack is four. That's pretty much it. You've gotten your value right there. That makes everything else included in this box gravy and the nicest kind of gravy, right? The white kind with little bits of sausage in it. The pins alone are worth the price of entry here. I would almost consider buying a whole nother box if I knew I could get the other two pins that I don't already have. That's how impressed I was with these two nickel-plated collector's pins. I have to say that IndieBox is improving every single time out. I can't wait to see what they do with the August box, which should be arriving at my doorstep any second now. And I will try to rush out a video a little bit faster on that one if you guys uh, would be so inclined as to watch it. Uh, the reason that I kind of took my time, besides just pure laziness, is that I like to get a feel for the contents of the box. You're not gonna see me do a camera handheld, uh, shaky unboxing where I pull things out of the box and go, hey, it's a sticker, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's nothing wrong necessarily with those types of unboxings. They're just not for me. I wanna unbox this thing and put it through its paces. I wanna to listen to the soundtrack. I wanna evaluate the quality of the remix. I wanna look at the poster. I wanna to touch the pins. I wanna put a temporary tattoo on my kid's forehead. I just wanna experience the box before I actually show it to you guys. And I think that comes from my game coverage. I always do first impressions, but I also really do two or three good hours of playing before I do the first impression. I don't want to appear uninformed, and I don't want you to mistake any of my uninformed opinions for the law or for truth. I want to actually be telling you things that you can depend on. Yeah, that sounds a little bit like a politician talking there, but anyway, let's wrap this up, guys. I can't believe if you've stayed this long that you actually have. So I have been Big Dave. This has been the July Indie Box. It has been a very impressive, impressive box. I am uh, definitely recommending that you take a look at theindiebox.com. Do the math, think about it, and consider whether or not it is right for you. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. Thank you.